Hello, everybody. Welcome to the What's New webinar for Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. We are very excited for the webinar this morning to show off all the new features and enhancements inside uh, this new product for Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. And so uh, just a couple slides before we go ahead and, and get started showing the, uh, 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 the product. You can go to the next slide today. All right, so um, a question I'd like to answer is what is Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic? And uh, if you're familiar with our products, we have our standalone product and then we have uh, several products that are integrated in the popular CAD platforms. And Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic is integrated inside 3D Systems Geomagic Design. And uh, this product was previously called a LibreCam and the, the previous version was a LibreCam 3. And uh, the reason for the name change is 3D Systems bought out a Libre design, and then they also bought out another company called Geomagic Solutions. And so they kind of merged the two, and, and so now a Libre design is now called Geomagic Design. And so with that name change, uh, we changed the name of our product, and with this new version, it is now called Visual Cam for Geomagic. And it is a fully integrated cam software for 3D Systems Geomagic Design. And uh, a couple things worth noting is when you download a demo of this new product or you download the, the new uh, version if you're a product owner, it includes both the mill and turn module in, in one single download. Uh, however, each module is sold and licensed separately and if you uh, have a license for mill but not turn, turn will run in, in demo mode unless you, you, you purchase it and license it. So uh, that makes it convenient. You're only paying for the, the modules that you need, uh, but the other ones are there to, to demo and try out uh, if you do decide to purchase. Uh, so t today's webinar is going to be an overview of the new features and enhancements. Uh, so what it's not is a full product demonstration. Uh, we simply don't have time to go over all the features and enhancements of this product. We'll be focusing on what's new uh, with an emphasis on the turn module, which is an all new module for Visual Cam for Geomagic. Uh, it was not available in the previous version of a LibreCam. Uh, however, if you do want a full product demonstration, if you're not familiar with our software or you'd like to see the new version more in depth, you can give us a call and uh, we'll set up a, a full product demonstration for you. One of our technical support engineers will uh, demo the software for you. If you are located outside of North America, uh, you can contact us and we'll help you get in touch with a reseller in your area that can give you a demonstration as well as help you and, and support you as you purchase the product. And so if you'd like to download a free demo of this new version, you can do so at mechsoft.com as well as visualcamforgeomagic.com. There's some videos on, on the, the product website there at visualcamforgeomagic.com, some more information on the, the prices and the configuration. So you can head on over there and, and learn a lot more about the product. So uh, this is a question we, we get a lot. Uh, is the webinar going to be recorded? Absolutely. We, we always record our webinars. We typically put them on the blog. However, this webinar we're not going to put on the blog, but you will get an email with uh, information on how to watch the recording. And the reason for that is we are going to be having a webinar with 3D Systems uh, on February 4th at, um, I believe it's 8 a.m. Uh, so you will receive more information on that. So we want to focus on that and, and promote that webinar and not draw too much attention to this webinar. So the webinar this morning is for uh, customers and partners only. So if you receive the email, that means that you are a, a customer uh, or potential customer uh, or you are a partner of Nextsoft Corporation. So this morning's webinar, uh, first you're going to hear from Uday. Uday is our technical support manager. Uh, many of you know Uday, uh, and you've gotten great support from Uday, and so uh, you'll be in good hands hearing from him present the mill module of Visual Cam for Geomagic. And then after that, we're going to hear from Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon is our international sales manager. Scott has a uh, very long uh, technical background, and he's very knowledgeable in, in machining and CAD CAM software. So uh, you'll also be in good hands with Scott presenting the turn module of Visual Cam for Geomagic. And then after that, we're going to have a brief question and answer period, depending on uh, how much time we have left. And then uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up after that. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, hand this over to Uday. And Uday is going to get started with the mill module of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Uday, the floor is yours. 
Thanks, Tim, for the wonderful introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to folks wherever you've joined us from. And we really appreciate you taking us the time to join us for the webinar for a Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Now, before I get started with the uh, Visual Cam for Geomagic uh, demonstration and presentation of the product, I just wanted to quickly show you how we can get access to all of this from our website. So if you happen to visit us at mexop.com, you can go under products, select mill, and click on visual cam for geomagic. And then selecting learn more will take you to our visual cam for geomagic site. And right on that main page, you can click on see what's new in visual cam for geomagic. Now this gives you a list of all the new features and enhancements that have been introduced in Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Now some of these features are available across all configurations, right? Starting from standard, expert, and pro configurations of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic, it is certified to run in Alibre Design version 2012, with Geomagic Design 2013, and the latest Geomagic Design 2014 version. So if you are a current Alibre Cam customer and you're running one of these versions of Alibre or Geomagic Design 2012 or Geomagic Design 2013 and 14, upgrading it to Visual Cam 2014, you will be able to still run it in these configurations of Alibre or Geomagic Design. Now there have been several new enhancements and features and I'm going to try to cover as much as possible during the presentation, but if we are not able to get through all of them, you are more than welcome to take a look at it and this document is available to you on our website. You can download them and view it as well. So some of the key enhancements are multi-threading for toolpath regeneration. We have new enhancements and new features in two axis machining methods. Now these features are available across all configurations, standard, expert, pro, and premium. So I'm going to be giving you a demonstration of the two axis enhancements. There have also been enhancements in three-axis toolpath methods as well. Uh, there have been options for better memory management, performance improvements, and also enhancements in four-axis. And we are also introducing a brand new turning module. So our standalone turn module is now available as an integrated product in Geomagic Design. And my colleague Scott Dixon would be going over the turning module once we go through the milling module. So without any further delays, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So I have Geomagic Design 2014 loaded. Now as you install Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic, you would see the add-ons by going over to your add-on manager. And you'll notice the Visual Cam 2014 add-on automatically set to active and loaded. So when you open up a part in Geomagic Design, the first thing you will notice under the add-ons tab is the option to load the Visual Cam 2014 add-on. Now the reason for the name change to Visual Cam 2014 from Alibre Cam, as Tim already pointed out, was Alibre design got bought out by 3D Systems and the product uh, was also merged with Geomagic uh, suite of products and they called it Geomagic Design. And Visual Cam was used instead of mill or turn because we're now introducing the both milling and turning modules. So we offer two to five axis uh, machining solutions in the mill module and a two-axis CNC late solution for turning applications. Now to load the mill module, select Visual Cam under the add-ons tab in the Alibre or Geomagic Design CADS ribbon bar and select mill. This automatically loads the milling browser right next to your Design Explorer in Geomagic Design. Now you will be able to switch back and forth between your Design Explorer and Visual Cam by just clicking on the Design Explorer in here, which is just a toggle at the, by selecting the tabs down at the bottom of the browser window. So you can go back, make design changes, make edits to your part, and then regenerate your tool batch. Or if you need to go back and reselect machining features, you can do that. Now that's the beauty of working with integrated cam system. Let's take a look at one of the new features that have been introduced in the 2014 release. Uh, this is two axis high-speed pocketing. This method is available across all configurations of Visual Cam 2014. You, you standard, 
expert and pro configuration. Now, just to kind of give you a brief overview of what this two-axis high-speed pocketing method does, this toolpath method creates constant tangential arcs. In this method, the main benefit is the cut method is using constant in tool engagement when removing materials. Now, what this translates to you in terms of machining is you can run the cutter at higher feed rates, which significantly reduces your machining time, also increases uh, you know, the savings in terms of cost, and also reduces tool wear, which basically translates into cost savings for you. So to access this method, you can locate it in the two axis, and you'll find it right in here, which is high-speed pocketing. And we'll kind of briefly go over some of the parameters in here. So you can go to your high-speed cut parameters tab where you can specify your cut direction. You can choose your step over distance. And of course, you can specify cut levels and all the entry and exit parameters. Now, for those of you who are familiar with our Alibre Cam version 3, you will notice that the interface is, you know, looks a lot similar. And it's very easy to work with in terms of the workflow. Now, here's your high-speed pocketing toolpath. Let's go ahead and take a look at the simulation of this high-speed pocketing toolpath. So I'm going to switch over to the Simulate tab in the Machining Operations browser and click on the Simulation window and select the operation and click on Play to run the simulation of the high-speed pocketing toolpath. As you can notice, the toolpath starts out at the spiral pattern and then creates constant tangential arcs. So this allows you to have constant cutter engagement and you can run it at higher feed rates, which saves you in terms of machining time and costs. There's your high-speed pocketing tool. But again, this method is available across all configurations of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Now, we would like to go ahead and also show you some of the new enhancements that we have in two-axis methods. So I'm going to talk about a couple of enhancements in the two-axis pocketing operation. And let's go ahead and load the Visual Cam add-on. Select Visual Cam and Mill. And it automatically loads the machining operations and the machining objects browser in Visual Cam. Now to toggle between your machining operations and the objects browser, you can click on Show Tool and Machining Objects. This allows you to toggle, display, and hide the machining objects browser. So you can define your tools. You can create predefined machining regions. And also, you can load knowledge bases from previous parts that you already programmed. Now, let's take a look at one of the other methods, which is a new cut pattern that we've introduced in two-axis pocketing. So you can access this method by going to two-axis and select pocketing under the two-axis methods. Now, this method, the offset spiral pocketing, the cut pattern, in the cut pattern, the tool will traverse in a spiral pattern, which creates successive offsets of the part shape. Now, the main benefit of this cut method is resulting in smoother cut motions when removing material. So you can look at the cut parameters under two-axis pocketing, and you'll notice that there's a new cut pattern that's available to you, which is offset spiral under the cut parameters tab. Now, here is your offset spiral pocketing toolpath. Let's go ahead and run a simulation. We're going to go to the simulation window and select play to run the simulation. There's your simulation of the offset spiral pocketing cut pattern. Now let's talk about one other nice enhancement that I like in the 2014 version under pocketing is we have an option called corner cleanups. Now in the previous versions of Alibre Cam, the corner cleanups option used to result in a linear moves now which are now being replaced with tangential arcs. Again, the benefit of this is you can run it at higher feed rates. Now I'm going to select the option that says clean corners and go generate the toolpath. You will now notice that the toolpath results in tangential arcs right at the corners. Now this is also one of the new features that we have introduced in the 2014 release. And this is available across all configurations of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Standard, expert, and pro configurations. So if you are a standard user, you can take advantage of all of these features as well. Now let's go take a look at the simulation in here. So I'm just going to go back and run the simulation. So I'm going to reorder the operation in here by just doing a simple drag and drop and hit play to run the simulation. So there is your 
pocketing simulation with the clean corners, corner cleanup option selected. Now these are some of the new features and enhancement that you can see right in the two axis machining method. Now I'm also going to go ahead and show you one other option that's available in the two axis methods which is the option to keep the tool down in pocketing operations. Now here's an example where I would like to show you what the tool pad looks like without the option to keep tool down selected. Now what this method is going to do or allow you to do is it will minimize the number of times the cutter engages into the material and without having to tool lift over when it transitions you know at the same cut level. So with the option to keeping tool down this attempts to keep the tool down from lifting when transferring between cut areas and tries to traverse along the previous cut areas. Now as you notice here in this particular operation that we program we have not selected the always keep tool down and let's go take a look at the simulation real quick here and see what the tool path looks like before we make a change to it. So you'll notice that the cutter retracts and re-engages back into the material at a couple of locations here, several different locations actually. So we can minimize these by using the option always keep tool down under the cut parameters tab. Again, this option is available to you in all configurations of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. So we're going to go back and edit the operation, go over to cut parameters and we'll select always keep tool down and generate the toolpath. I'm going to toggle the toolpath visibility. You'll now notice that there's only a couple of locations in here where the cutter engages back into the material, eliminating, you know, like four or five engaging retracts. So basically, it'll save you time in terms of machining and also makes your, you know, programming a lot more efficient. So here's the simulation with the always keep tool down option selected. And as you can see, the the tool is not be you know, it's not lifting when transitioning or transferring between cut areas and it traverses along the previous cut areas. Now these are just some of the enhancements that you can see in the two axis methods in Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Now I would also like to introduce one of the new features that's available across all configurations of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic that is the ability to use multi-threading for tool path generation. Now this is a very powerful, nice feature and enhancement from the previous version of Alibre Cam where it takes advantage of your multi-core processing capabilities of your computer to regenerate tool paths. So the tool paths are generated in multiple threads. Now just to give you a, a comparison between how it works and when you do a single threaded operation as well as multi-threading I have it set up which includes four different operations in here. I'm going to go ahead and regenerate them. So when I regenerate it here, I do not have the option to, uh, you know, multi-threading selected in here. As you can notice, it basically goes through each operation, generates each operation sequentially, and then, you know, it takes a much longer time to generate each of these tool paths. Now with the option to, you know, turn on multi-threading, it saves you time in toolpath computations and we've noticed that it's almost four times faster with the multi-threading option turned on. So I'm going to go over to the machining preferences under CAM preferences and select always generate toolpaths in multiple threads. When this option is enabled and you regenerate either a machining job or a setup or when you're regenerating multiple operations, it automatically generates these toolpaths in multiple threads so basically, it's a big time saver. As you can see, the operations are automatically being, you know, tossed into different processors, different cores on your computer, and makes your toolpath generation time a lot faster and efficient. Now, these are just some of the new features and enhancements in the mill module. You know, feel free to take a look at all the new features on our website. And if you do have any questions about any of these methods, you know, feel free to drop your questions in the go to webinars chat session, and we'll try to get to them as quickly as you can and we'll try to do our best to answer your questions. Now, I would like to go ahead and introduce my colleague Scott Dixon here to go ahead and give you a presentation of the, the new turning module that we have introduced in Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Over to you, Scott. 
Uday, thank you very much. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us in this webinar. We are very excited to have the turning module integrated into Geomagic. This is the first release that we've done this. And I will say up front that that was our main goal, was to get it integrated so that uh, you as a user can take advantage of a lot of the functionality within Geomagic as well as common user interface that you, you might be accustomed to uh, in the milling module as well. So right now as you, uh, as you, as we go through and take a look at the interaction, the user interaction, you'll see the, the similarities between the uh, turning UI and the milling UI. To get to turning, uh, we just pulled down the Visual Cam 2014, pull down, you see that turning is the third option there. By clicking on that, the browser for turning comes up on the left of the screen, just like it does in milling. And as you look at the layout, it is, it is very similar to milling, so that you ought to be able to uh, relate to habits and, and where to find things. We have, uh, nevertheless, uh, modified this so that it is particular to the environment of programming a lathe. And uh, we'll point out some of those things as we go through the highlights of this turning module. Um, if there's any of you that had used the older version, uh, Visual Turn 1.0, you will see how nice it is to have this module now integrated in to the CAD system and to be similar to milling. There's so many advantages, we just can't list them all. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of the functionality just for a moment. Um, I would like to say that our turning module, as it has been up until this point, will handle single spindle lathes that are two and a half axis. And, um, and I might say two essentially single turret so pretty much basic lathes for programming, and we do ID, OD work, roughing, finishing, grooving, threading, and uh, the basic functionality that you would expect to find, including parting off, that you would expect to find in turning. Okay, so let's take a look then at some of the um, objects that, were, uh, that are new uh, in this module. And uh, let's bring up the uh, machine definition, uh, Uday, and take a look at that panel just briefly. Within this uh, definition, you'll have a responsibility to define a turning coordinate system, and you see it appear on the back side of the part in the screen. We automatically orient that for you so that the z-axis of that coordinate system runs along the center line of rotation as you would expect on a lathe, and the x-axis, which is the green arrow, uh, points up towards the positive x-axis on your lathe, so this truly defines the axis, axes of the machine. And like I mentioned, we automatically orient that for you. If you need to orient it differently than we position it, because maybe your part is a different orientation in space, because Geomagic is a parametric system, we would prefer, and it's probably required, that you may not be able to relocate the, the model in space. So using this dialog, you can position the coordinate system relative to the model and maintain your parametrics and so forth and not disturb those. All right. Um, let's go to the next option, and I'm going to skip right down to the part. Let's look at the uh, part object. Now on this panel you have basically two choices. On the left, as you can see lower at the lower part of that dialog, you can select the surfaces or the solid if that's what it is. And um, one of the nice ways to do that, uh, you can not only pick them on the screen, but one of the nice ways to do that is to go right back to your design explorer, if you wish, and pick those uh, entities right off the Design Explorer. Uh, we allow you to switch back and forth there easily and it uh, makes it very convenient. Taking advantage again of the Geomagic environment. Um, on the right side is the ability to select curves. Now there may be some kinds of parts that are not rotationally symmetric 
and you may need to do more cross sections, bring some curves around to a plane, and then use uh, curves for selecting uh, the shape that you're going to turn on the lathe. Once that part geometry is selected, we automatically do uh, a cross section in that ZX plane, and you will see it in orange on the screen there. That is then the shape that we see and are going to work towards as the part geometry for the, the operations in turning. All right, the next thing then naturally would be to define the stock and we default by, uh, the dialog shows that the default at the top is cylindrical stock and we automatically create a, a piece of bar stock, let's say, that is a minimum size for the geometry that is known. On the dialog, you can expand it by increasing the radius, if you wish, and increasing the length to allow stock to be removed. And that, uh, that makes it possible for you to make the stock a little bit bigger. You can actually even key in the values and so forth. All right? Now, one more thing that you may want to do, and I'd like to have Uday go up to the align function once you've defined that stock. The align function allows you to roughly position the stock relative to your part, and this does move the stock around, and you've got the option to, to set it uh, aligned to the left, center, or right. And if you click on those just to show the difference there, how the part is moving, it appears that the part is moving in the in the stock, but it's really uh, the stock that moves relative to the part. All right, so there's some control. Now, um, we produce or create a setup automatically, and by default, if, you, if you're okay with your program zero being at the back side of the part, uh, you can default to that, but in the case that we've got programmed here, we want to show you that you do have the ability to set an independent work zero. This is your program zero. And again, that's available in milling, so again, it's common here in turning as well. This allows you to select any position you want, as long as it's on center line, but also you can set it relative to the stock box or the part box. And for this example, we've got it uh, set relative to the uh, stock box and at the right side. And so that will become then your program zero. All your operations will generate tool paths according to that zero. Okay, for the setup, that's basically it. Just remember that you need that uh, turning coordinate system to be on center line. Let's, like, let's take a look at some of the uh, machining operations we've got pre-programmed here. You can do roughing, finishing, and we have grooving, roughing, and finishing. And the ability to follow an independent curve we also do threading, ID and OD, and parting off. Those are the basic operations that are available to you. So, and then there's, of course, drilling, uh, basic, some of the basics for lathe, which you would do on center line, drilling, tapping, and boring, and reverse boring. Okay, um, let's take a look at the turning rough operation, and just we're just going to point out a few uh, parameters here. We've selected an 80, a 55 degree diamond and um, you have the ability at the bottom to set whether that tool is being used for OD forward, which means towards the chuck, or backwards, which is away from the chuck, and of course ID. We'll do an ID later, but this, this one is OD. All the same parameters, what the material of the cutter is made of, the feeds and speeds, the uh, offset register, uh, those parameters as you may be accustomed to in milling if you use that, uh, that system you, can, you will find here as well. In the feeds and speeds, we've added a little bit extra here. Uh, you have control of the direction of the spindle and you also have uh, the ability to specify whether the feed is in inches per revolution or inches per minute, which is not common in milling. Uh, the feed rates can also be loaded from a file, and that is a common. That's functionality we've had in milling for quite a long time. And you specify the material that you're cutting, the cutter material, 
and um, certain other parameters about the cut and uh, we will locate, the system will locate those suggestions for you, propagate them into the different cut types and store those then with the tool. All right, very good. Um, so we'll select that. Uh, let's go to the uh, global parameters and just look at those briefly. This is where you'll input how much stock is to be left on the side, uh, tolerance for any curves, and also the extent from start to end that you wish to cut. And by default, it'll cut the entire OD, which is fine with us here. Now, there's one uh, interesting thing that I'd like to do. I guess we're going to do this up front. You'll notice that this profile on the OD has a groove, and I do not want the roughing tool to go down into that groove at all. Um, maybe what we should do today is look at the other parameters. We will generate this first, come back and change this. That might be a little more effective. So let's look at the turn roughing parameters now. And here's where you specify whether you want linear cuts or offset cuts, the direction of cutting, and so forth. These parameters uh, I think you'll relate to as you, as you do uh, turning work. And there's a very good help file that will indicate the, the definition and how to use these parameters. Let's generate this then. Um, there's a toolpath, and if you look at it closely where that groove is, you'll notice that the cutter descended down into that material according to the heel angle of the tool. won't violate the part, but I don't really even want it to do that. So let's go in and edit this operation. We will go to uh, the global parameters and specify an avoidance section. If, Uday, if you just put a line across the top of that groove, that uh, you can select the geometry there, two points which will produce a line, that will then become an avoid zone. Now if we go and generate the operation again, you will see that the tool does not now enter down into the groove. And so we've cleaned that up a little bit. And that will leave a much straighter surface, uh, which will be better for the grooving tool as well. All right, very good. Let's go on then to uh, turn finish. And just briefly talk about this one. We're going to use the same tool uh, it, again, will use the same profile on the outside. The parameters, we'll briefly look at uh, those. They're pretty much the same, but here, right up front, let's set that avoidance section again. Draw the line across that groove so that the grooving tool, I mean the uh, finishing tool, uh, does not enter down into that groove. And that will that will then do a finishing uh, pass along that entire OD profile. And you'll notice that behind that little flange relief there, again, it will not violate uh, the, 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 the geometry or the part. Okay, um, let's generate that, Uday. I think that's good enough. Finishing is, is pretty much done. Good. All right, let's... Um, simulate those two right now. And so we'll go to the simulation window. And um, now in simulation, if we look at the parameters, we have introduced a new three-quarter view. And this is very important if you're doing ID work. So you can see inside. And so we'll leave the, the uh, simulation to that and always look at this this three-quarter view of it so we can see inside. All right, let's go then on to the drilling, which is the next operation. We'll simulate these. Now, by the way, I didn't do facing in this one, but facing, you would just use the roughing and the finishing, just specify a different direction of cut uh, if you wanted to do facing. So let's do the drilling now. Yeah, there we are, the OD. All right, let's do the standard drilling. This operation looks quite a bit like the, uh, like the drilling operation uh, you would find in milling. Many of the parameters are the same. You will set the drilling type. Those are the same options for you, deep drill, break chip, 
and uh, you've got dwells, a uh, number of other things that are available to you as you may be accustomed to in drilling throughout the milling module. We've chosen a, a 5 8 drill. This hole, 5 8 hole goes all the way through. And so let's just uh, go ahead and we will, we will go ahead and generate that or just replay that one. And let's go to, we might as well just go to simulation, take a look at that, and you'll see the, uh, the advantage of this three-quarter, there we go, three-quarter um, display on the, on the simulation. Okay, next thing we would like to do, this uh, ID has a pretty large counter bore, so let's go to the turn rough uh, at the bottom, which is really... Um, the ID and we have selected again a 55 degree diamond which uh, will be a boring bar and we will turn we will rough out that counter bore and then finish it and since we've looked at these parameters let's just go and um, replay this do a simulation and it will include the chamfer as part of that ID boundary. And since the finishing we've gone through, let's just uh, replay the finishing. It's the same as the OD finishing dialogues, and that just finishes the, the ID. So there we have some of the basics. Uh, we, we didn't do uh, threading on this one, nor part off, uh, because of time. So those are the basics for the operations. All right, now, um, next thing let's do, um, we want to show you some of the other benefits that you get through uh, this module being integrated into Geomagic Design, and that is things such as uh, the library capability. Uh, we want you to know that when this system is installed, you will get a uh, quantity of post processors for uh, turning machines that we've already developed. A number of those. We don't have quite as many as for milling, but uh, this this uh, list will grow, I'm sure, as time goes on, and those will be available to you. And so let's go through and post-process this entire job and just show you uh, how this is done. It is, again, exactly the same method in which uh, those of you who have done it in milling, it will be done. You select the, set, the setup or any of the objects above, select the post, and it will, um, it will post-process all of your programs. You get uh, the output file name, shows the post there, and then let's post it, and it will list it on the screen in uh, the ASCII format. And there you have it, and that's as simple as it is. All the same throughput as you're accustomed to with the milling. Now, after posting, let us uh, do uh, shop documentation. I'm going to let Uday go ahead and select uh, those options to go up and, and generate the shop documentation for this job. And it will generate those operations, uh, take their tool paths, and create for us a document that can be then sent out into the shop to indicate how the setup should be done, what tools are used, and, and so forth. And this is delivered, and this is capabilities that you, you have with the system, much like milling. Again, we have brought the uh, turning module in and made it uh, have a lot of the same functionality as milling that you're accustomed to. Very nice job, including capturing, capturing the picture and so forth. All right, the last thing that uh, maybe we could do here then, Uday, is, uh, and I'm going to let you kind of follow through, but here's how we're, we're going to save these operations uh, in our knowledge base. And again, those of you who may be familiar with milling will know that this is uh, the same functionality. We just want to show you that we've included this in turning, so there's no question about it. Uday is going to uh, save these operations into a knowledge base here. And what we're going to do then after that is he's going to retrieve uh, another part which uh, 
has no operations in it, and he is going to then retrieve those operations into that part, and that'll save him the time of having to define those operations all over again. All he'll need to do is possibly hook up some of the geometry, because it'll be different in this part, and then generate the operations. So he's loading those uh, operations. He selects the file name that he saved them as. There they are. They come into, uh, into the browser under the setup. You may have to define your different part. Uh, that part is, uh, is inherited down into the operations. Make sure the parameters are right for this part. Any of the operations that may need a little bit of care. And then uh, when he's done, generate and simulate. So this is very useful. Of course, many of you who are accustomed to this functionality know that this is very useful for those people who have parts that are similar. Not only similar in shape, but also similar in the way they are cut. Because it is the operations that are, are uh, applied to the new part, and they are flexible enough to use different shape geometry. All right, very good. Um, that's uh, pretty much m most of the functionality, or a lot of the functionality. It'll give you a good flavor for what we have added into the turning module, uh, included into, um, into Geomagic. Uh, I do want to make mention that uh, in this process of integrating turning into Geomagic, some of you may start thinking, oh, what about, uh, I now can switch back and forth between lathe and mill. We have not put a connection between turning and milling at this point in time. Uh, that possibly would be a future, but right now they are very separate. And so uh, you just have two modules, milling and turning. You can use either one of them according to what you have purchased. And uh, both of them are separate and individual. Uday, I'm going to uh, turn the time back to you if you have anything else you'd like to add on the turning module that maybe I have missed, and we will wrap this up and turn the time back to Tim. Uday? Thank you, Scott, for the great presentation. Uh, folks, I hope you enjoyed both the milling and the turning module demonstrations. Uh, Scott did cover pretty much all the new features in the turning module. Just one thing I probably wanted to also let you know that when you program your roughing operations and turning, the system automatically takes into account the in-process stock and also it automatically you know, compensates for the relief angle of the tools and make sure that all your tool paths are gouge free. So if you do have any further questions on the turning or the middle module, please feel free to ask us any questions that you have and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this back to our marketing coordinator, Tim, here. And here you are, Tim. All right, thank you, Uday, and thank you, Scott, for those uh, great presentations on both the mill module and the turn module of Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. Uh, we're now going to have a brief question and answer time, as the, the slide indicates here. So uh, I, if you have a question that you haven't asked yet, feel free to do so in the, the questions panel. Um, or, or it might say chat. I'm not exactly sure what it sees, what you see on your end, but it's either chat or questions. You can ask your question right there, and uh, we'll we'll answer it here on the spot. Or if we don't get to your question, we'll we'll contact you and uh, uh, with, with an answer to your question. So no, no matter what your question, we'll get answered. So uh, a few general questions that we'll we'll start off with. Uh, that we, we typically get a lot, and I'm going to ask these questions, and I'm going to have Anita, who is our VP of Sales and Operations, answer some of these more general questions for us. Uh, so the first question is, what does Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic actually include? Uh, now, Visual Cam for Geomagic includes two modules, the mill module as well as the turn module. 
The mill and turn modules are sold separately. So customers who currently are running a Libre Cam 3.0 and upgrading to our uh, brand new 2014 version uh, will be eligible for the mill module. Now if needed, you can purchase the turn module. It is a separate module. Uh, we'd be more than happy to give you pricing details if required. Uh, there is also the What's New document on our website. Uh, Uday is actually helping me out there, pointing to that on your screen. Uh, click on that. You should be able to go through that document, uh, which is pretty detailed. So that would be a good place to start uh, for the new features, Tim. All right. Thank you, Anita, for that great answer. So uh, the next question, uh, still a little more general, but. Uh, a great question to, to answer at this time. What are the top features of Visual Cam 2014 for GeoMagic? Maybe you want to answer that for us? Uh, now, uh, I know Uday and Scott did a great presentation on that, but a few features that really uh, we worked very hard uh, during this year was one was the two and a half axis high speed machining methods. This is brand new in our mill module. Uh, all configurations of the product will have it included. Uh, we're very excited about this new, new method. We've got some good reviews about it too, so uh, I'm hoping all our new customers will enjoy these methods as well. Uh, the next one is the multi-threading operations. Uh, like Uday is pointing on your screen there, uh, this is a big enhancement that we've added in our 2014 versions. All configurations again have this uh, feature, speed and memory improvements, especially for the 3D offset machining methods. Now, uh, the 3D offset machining methods are included in the professional configuration of the product, and uh, uh, we worked very hard on uh, improving those methods uh, for this product. Uh, and of course, last but not the least, the turn module, which was uh, missing in our um, uh, Alibre Cam 3.0 product, has been included in the new version, which, uh, yes, we've renamed it to Visual Turn, Visual Cam for GeoMagic. The turn module is now available, again, sold separately, but we've got uh, that included in our product as well. Thank you, Anita, for that great overview. And uh, we have a, a question that just came in. With the new split for support and maintenance at GeoMagic, will support and maintenance be split for the visual cam products from Xsoft? Anita, do you want to answer that question, uh, kind of how our support and maintenance works, and, and address that question? Uh, sure thing, Tim. Uh, yes. Now, for all our customers using the CAM module embedded in GeoMagic Design, MechSoft will take on direct support for you. So you are more than welcome to call us, email us. We will answer all your CAM questions. Uh, the, the design part, the CAD portion, yes, uh, your CAD vendor will help you with those, but CAM, we will directly help you, so please don't hesitate to contact us directly. Maintenance will be uh, collected by Microsoft for the CAM module. The design module, your design vendor will be uh, collecting maintenance on that. So since CAM module, we are con collecting maintenance, we will be helping you directly. Thank you, Anita. Uh, we have a, a more technical question. Um, what effect do the new pocketing methods have on the size of the post? We are somewhat memory constrained on our mill. That's kind of the background of the question. So Uday, I'm going to have you answer this question. I'm going to ask it one more time. What effect do the new pocketing methods have on the size of the post? Thanks, Tim. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the new enhancement, the high-speed pocketing toolpath method. Now, as the toolpath is formed using tangential arcs, so uh, in terms of the posted output, I would probably think that it's outputting arcs, so you'd end up with circular interpolation in the posted outputs with GO2s and GO3s, and it should significantly, you know, be smaller in terms of size and kilobytes. Again, it all depends on the size of parts you're trying to program. You can either post operations out individually or you can post them out as a set, depending on what your limitations or constraints are 
on your machine controller. Great, thank you, Uday. Um, uh, another question, we, we definitely get this question every webinar. Will this webinar be recorded for me to watch again later? And uh, absolutely, um, as always, we, we do record the webinars. And uh, typically, we, we post the webinars on our blog. Um, for this webinar, we, we won't be posting on our blog. However, uh, you will get an email notification with the uh, um, details on how to view the webinar. And the reason why we won't be posting on our blog is we want to draw attention to the webinar that we'll be uh, doing with 3D Systems. And uh, a little bit on that, uh, we're partnering up with 3D Systems for a joint webinar. And that webinar will be two weeks from today at the same time. So that's February 4th at 8 a.m. Pacific time or 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, 3D Systems Geomagic Design will be hosting the webinar and uh, we'll get a, a very in-depth look at both Geomagic design as well as uh, another look at Visual Cam for Geomagic. So it'll be a joint webinar we're, we're doing with them. So you'll you'll hear from uh, one of their um, design reps as well as um, Uday uh, to, to present the, the camp portion. So um, definitely stay tuned for, for more details on that. Uh, but if you'd like to see the recording, uh, watch your email and you'll get an email uh, addressing um, the, the recording. And uh, Another question uh, we get is, is there a release sale for um, Visual Cam for Geomagic? And uh, the answer is yes for North American customers only. Uh, if you are in North America, you can take advantage of our release sale that will be continued through the end of this month. Um, and then after that, uh, the normal pricing will continue. Um, so uh, if you'd like to take advantage of that, go ahead and give us a call. Um, so th this is all the time we have for questions at this point. So we're just going to have a, a few last slides that we'll, we'll look at here before we, we uh, part ways this morning. Uh, so if you'd like to download a free demo of the software, we highly encourage you to do so. Um, most of you in this webinar are already product owners or, or partners. Um, but uh, if you happen to not be, you can still download a demo at mechsoft.com or visualcamforgeomagic.com. And if you visit that product site, visualcamforgeomagic.com, uh, we, uh, you'll, you'll, we highly recommend you doing so. You'll, there's a lot of information on there, some product videos, um, pricing information. Uh, so everything you need to know about the product you can be found on that website. And uh, again, the webinar recording uh, will be available by email tomorrow, uh, if not later this afternoon. And for purchasing information, you can call us at 949-654-8163. And uh, if you're in North America, you can take advantage of that release sale. Or if you're outside of North America, um, we can help you get in touch with a reseller in your area um, or contact the reseller that, that sold you the product to begin with. And so um, last couple um, things to note, we do mention our webinars uh, announcements on our social media accounts first before we send out email. So if you'd like to, to be on top of everything and, and find out and get signed up before anybody else, uh, go ahead and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we definitely recommend you to check us out on YouTube as well. We have a lot of product tutorials on our CAM products, uh, some product overview videos as well. So lo lot, lots of videos there to check out. And uh, Last but not least, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to watch this webinar and, and learn more about Visual Cam 2014 for Geomagic. If we didn't get to your question, we will answer it uh, to you directly. And if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you, everybody, and have a great day.